So, let's uh, continue with the second part of the video. In this part we will uh, discuss about uh, how to create a loop. So, to create a, a loop we will actually need um, the groove object, obviously, and I think we'll start by that. So in the groove object uh, we will have to put the piano on and, uh, you know, I will just copy what uh, the tutorial uh, regarding, well not tutorial, the reference uh, says uh, regarding the groove object here in Max. So I need this zero to specify that I want um, to start at the zero milliseconds of the sample or the buffer, the loop, which is absolutely crucial to create the loop pedal, and the arguments, which is uh, zero, that means stop, and the other argument, the other message in this type, in this uh, in this case, it's the one that says play, right? So, these two are absolutely crucial. Then I have to put gain, uh, just because I want to control how much volume each of the tracks should have, a DAC that will be able to report an output from uh, the sounds that are already recorded. And obviously I can put uh, a little number uh, box, it could be a float or it could be a whole number to control uh, the gain that I want for each of the tracks, right? So uh, for the loop and everything else we need also a, a, a panic button that will allow me to stop everything in case everything just goes crazy and I'll put it a little bigger so I can understand that this is the panic button. I'll put it in the zero, oh not in that zero, in the zero of stop Right, and in this whole thing will be duplicated, it, meaning uh, by the number of tracks that I need. In this case, I need three tracks, so I will duplicate it two times. Well, I'll duplicate it here, and another one there. It looks like a beautiful tree, three beautiful trees. Now, we should not forget to change here the number of the tracks so we don't create a mess. Oh, and. Uh, Number three, there you go. And also we should just uh, complete the connections that will enable us to hear everything and have it all correctly. Now obviously we can control individually the volume of each of the tracks, of each of the playback, um, but in case I don't want to do that, in case I want everybody to sound uh, with the same volume, I can connect this um, this cables to each of the tracks and that will enable me to just, oh, well, here it's like the individual one, but you can also have like a universal one. So we will just, I want to erase those because I do want to have a universal control of each of the volumes. So if we test it, yeah, it works, right? So I'll put a little loud so we can actually listen it quite well. So, and also panic buttons, we should not forget that, that's really important. So, yeah. This part that I just made is to control the groove, and uh, this, the groove object, as we already know, controls the uh, looping of the tracks. Now, I make this load bang because for this thing, for this thing to work properly, uh, we need uh, to click a loop and a zero so uh, everything's set and ready to roll. Uh, remember, uh, uh, if we don't do that, then the track might not play correctly. So I put the load bank so each time you open up your patch, everything will be in order and ready to oh, and ready to go. So. And as I am creating it right now, then I'll have to manually click on each of them. Um, so everything's in order, you know, so I'll do that just now. Loop one, zero, loop one, zero. Okay, so this part right here will be uh, in charge of looping all the tracks and having them in order. But I'm missing uh, the crucial part of when will this whole mayhem start. So, to do that, I need an input and the order of actually recording everything up. 
So, oops, I forgot to put everything a little, to put everything in with space, but I'm doing that just now. Many, many cables. Oop. Here we go. Now, the first thing we need is, of course, a source, an audio source. So for that, we'll use the ADC and also the toggle just to enable it or unable it or whatever I want. Oops. And uh, just to know uh, that a, a signal is coming in, I'll put the, um, the meter. Now, uh, I, I'm recording in the, in the microphone of my computer, so just like this channel is maybe not so necessary, but well. This is just to confirm that there's actually a signal coming in. And obviously we want to put that with a load bank so everything's ready uh, when we open up the patch as well. Uh, we'll put this a little closer and smaller so the cable is not... Yeah, so we already have a source and now we need the order of everything else. So, um, what I did in the other patch was to create another metronome that's separated from this one, from the first one that we made in the past video, because this one will uh, control the looping and this one just kind of uh, controls the measurements of each of the bars. Now, as I want the BPM to be the same for this metronome, I will connect this value over here, so we have the same measures and there's not a chaos, you know? And this uh, toggle right here will create all the mayhem. Now, this metronome will enable me as well to have a visual aid, and it could also help me have uh, um, an audio reference of the metronome. If I choose to connect this to a cycle and that cycle to a DAC, I can actually hear the metronome each time it sounds. In this case, in this exercise, I don't want to take too much time, um, I will just have a visual reference of the time, right? Now, to make sure that this happens in the patch, I will just re-enter uh, number 333 to make sure that this information will go right to this metronome. And we can actually check it. So, let's see. Oh, there you go. That's 180. So, that will give me a visual reference, and that's important uh, for this patch at least because I do want to uh, have a metronome to know that I'm actually arriving in time. Now, the next thing that will happen is that I need a new counter, and this counter will be a, di a bit different. It will not be to measure time, it will be to measure and to let me know where in, in time I am. Not how long, but where. So, this counter, uh, what I'm most interested in is in the carry count. Uh, the carry count uh, is important for me because it will be um, the same as in which measure I am at currently. Like it will, it's like an inspector. It's like a yeah. It lets me know where I am, and as it lets me know where I am, and this number right here will tell me which beat I am within a measure. It will enable me to control at which bar I want the punch in recording to start or where to stop. And so to do that, I'll use the selector tool. The selector tool connected with a record, it will enable me to create uh, the loop recordings that I'm actually wanting and that I'm not actually looking for. Um, I'll do this because I need some space to do that. So the selector tool, if I connect it to this and then I connect that to a record, then everything will start making sense in this chain. In this, I, I, I mentioned chain because I like to, the notion that I just click this toggle and chaos will unfold. Well, not chaos, but the loop recording will unfold on its own and I will not have to do anything else. So, the carry count will go into the selector tool. And here in the selector tool is very crucial to remember the size of each of the buffers. In this example, in this patch, it's rather easy because right now I'm looking at uh, uh, buffers that each of them lasts three bars. To make it a little easier um, to see, 
I'll change it to four bars. In the last video I explained why this is three instead of four. So, the buffer size changed and everything's ready to roll. That means that each of these buffers lasts four measures, right? So, for example, here in the selector tool, that's very important to remember, because then I remember I will know that the first recording will last four, and the second four, and the third four. So here I can decide when do I want to start recording and when I want to stop. In this case, I want each of the uh, loops to go after one another and recording uh, each track after one another. So, for example, I can choose to start recording at measure number two. To know when this will end and when will buffer number two start, I have to add four. So it's six. Oh, sorry. Six. <laughs> and then it goes the same. Plus four, ten, and then plus four, fourteen. Right? So right now I controlled when I want it to start recording and to stop recording. I'll uh, explain why. Now, I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little strange, I'm sick right now, so that's why my voice uh, sounds a little muffled. So I have to duplicate this, and I have to be sure to change the number, the, oop, the number of each, the name of each of the tracks, so it, uh, you know, matches its uh, buffer. One, two, three, one, two, three. So, and we must not forget that each of these has to have an input. So, where, whatever my input is, whatever my microphone is, I have to send some kind of signal to each one of this so it makes sense. And there's something to record, there's information to record for each of these tracks. So here's what uh, it's uh, most interesting. I already have the groove ready, right? So. Uh, what will happen now, uh, actually let's test that this actually sounds because um, sometimes it doesn't happen like that. So for example, uh, let's just test it out. So ta 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 Let's see if it recorded anything. Yes, it did. <laughs> so uh, let's see if it, you can actually hear it. Ta 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 It works. Fine. So, here we have that, and here's where the madness begins, and the fun begins, actually. So, I want the first buffer to be recorded at measure number two. And here, when we reach measure number six, I want this to start recording, I want this one to stop recording, and I want the loop to start playing, the first loop, the loop of the thing that I just recorded, okay? And this process will go on with each of these tracks. Why? Because I wanted a whole, only a button to unfold everything else, and because I want each of the buffers to start after one another. Obviously, if I wanted to give myself some a measure to breathe or a measure to uh, rest or whatever, I could do it um, in the selector tool because I can you know select when everything will start. But in this case, I want everything to to unfold right after one thing ends and the other one begins. So the same thing will happen here. When this one reaches ten, I want this one to stop recording or to be open to be recording anything I want the loop of the thing that I just recorded to start and I want this one to start recording immediately and when we arrive to this one I want this one to stop and I want this one to begin the loop of what I just recorded and that's why uh, that's what I call a chain a chain recording because I only Click this one and everything just starts automatically. So uh, just to check, uh, let me see if this one will actually happen. Blah, 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 blah. It does end. Wah, 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 wah. 
wah, 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 wah. Cool, it does. Now, one thing that's very important that I told you is that we have to click this so everything goes on in a loop. And with that said, allegedly everything's ready to roll. Um, now, obviously, I'm not putting any kind of rebirth that could be added over here or any like effects of looping fast forward and backwards and um, you know altering the speed, altering where I want everything to begin. Um, because the idea of this patch was to just do a loop recording in the sense of um, thinking about acoustic instruments that you just record the way the drum sounds and then you can actually hear the drum over and over or the voices on top of each other and so on and so forth. So let's try it out. Uh, everything's ready. So let's see. In the first one, I will try to follow up this, uh, the, the, the tempo. I'll do like a, a drum. Here I'll do like a hi-hat and here I'll just talk. Okay, so let's begin. Okay. Here I'll just talk because it's fun to hear everything going crazy. <laughs> okay. So here we're just listening to this one, and here we're seeing one of the problems that could unfold when you do a loop recording. That like this track gets polluted by this one and this one by that one. Let's see it. You know. Here I'll just talk because it's fun to yeah. hear. So, yeah, it goes on looping. Here I'll just talk because it's fun to hear. Here are the feet. And let's see if the panic Here button actually works. Uh, I think the only thing that we need to add on to the panic button is to stop also the counting over there. So, panic button working. So, to avoid the problem that we just uh, heard, that this one this one track got polluted with this one and stuff. It all depends on where you place your microphones. Um, if they are, if they will be near each of the sources. Um, so it's basically the routing of when, where does this go out, and where is the microphone of uh, each of the signals, right? So in my case, um, the microphone that would replace this would go in uh, very close to the to the piano board, you know, to the piano uh, strings. And uh, the output will go on stage to the people. So the pollution that might enter each of these tracks could be attenuated by that distance. But right now that's not possible because my input is uh, right next to my output, so that's a problem. But hey, this is the explanation of uh, the looping part. I hope you liked it and I hope you develop it more and do crazy things with that. Thank you and till the next time.